Max highlights coming up on the show. Magic moments: the sixth Harry Potter film hits German cinemas. Chart topper Icelandic singer Emiliana Torini has written a summer hit. And natural takes German film director Jan Haft and his films of the wilds. Euromax highlights, and here's your host, Karen Helmstedt. Hi there, and welcome to our highlights edition. Well, she swam her way into the hearts of Germans, both east and west, back in 1992, and became the darling of the newly unified nation. And by the time she finished her impressive swimming career in 2004, Franziska van Eimsig had enough gold medals to sink a ship and the public profile of a pop star. Well, now out of the water, she's proving to be just as successful with new careers as book author, designer, sport charity promoter, and Mother. Arriving for a quick visit to Hamburg. Time is of the essence. Every minute of Franziska van Anzik's four hour stay in the city is planned in great detail. I've got a lot to do at the moment. I'm always so rushed. Today in Hamburg, tomorrow Munich, then Berlin, and so on. I used to have to do a lot more to look after myself. I was extremely fit, and it was important to keep fit when traveling. Now her appointment schedule keeps her fit. Her agency is the key to planning her activities. Francisca has written a book for children and is still a sought-after model. She even takes to the catwalk to promote a range of swimwear she's designed herself. I'm not a sexy young thing anymore that shows off the bikinis. Now I want to be seen as the one that co-designs them. Paul Planschnase, the hero of her children's books, also helps in her charity work. Franziska von Anzik is heavily involved with a German charity designed to help sponsor athletes. Sport still remains dear to her heart. My life really revolves around me. So it was important for me to do something for other people. It was another step in getting more mature and taking responsibility for other athletes. And of course doing something that's close to my heart. And etwas to do what my heart am Herzen liegt. She spent a lot of time promoting young swimmers. 1,000 free swimming courses are on offer around Germany. This helps give children from less privileged backgrounds the chance to become maybe as good as the former world champion. Since retiring from the sport, Franziska van Almzig has stayed in the public spotlight. It's important for me to take on new challenges and get things done. The difference now is that I don't have to be the best. I don't have to be the most attractive, and I don't have to be the fastest. And that was what I desired most at the end of my career. It's important to get to the next level and to begin a happy life after sports. Franziska and her partner Jürgen Harder live in Heidelberg and have a one-and-a-half-year-old child. Her family is the most important part of her life. It's no surprise she wrote a book with a swimming theme for children. My son loves to see his mother in the top corner. It's nice to know that you're creative. I didn't really need creativity in the last 20 years. Now if I get some inspiration, and that happens mostly at night, I can get on the computer and write away. Another quick photo shoot on the banks of the Ulster in Hamburg. And then it's time to move on to her next appointment. I 
immer wenn es gut läuft, dann ähm, When things go well, I get a bit worried because I think it's got to get worse. Ich denke irgendwie es muss auch wieder runtergehen in meinem Leben. I've always had ups and downs in my life. Wirklich im Moment sehr sehr gut. I'm really happy at the moment, but I want to hold on to what I've got because I know it wasn't easy to get here. Aber das ist nicht so einfach. Pretty poetic, huh? Das war jetzt ganz schön poetisch. <lacht> Franziska van Amzik looks set to remain as successful out of the water as she was as a competitive swimmer in it. Well, speaking of successful, Harry Potter fever has been at a high over the past few weeks as the new film Harry Potter and the Half-Blood Prince has gone on a box office rampage here in Europe. The sixth film in the series, this one is said to be the darkest so far, and that despite the fact that all the young wizards are in the throes of puberty. Well, Euromax set out to see what the hardcore fans here in Berlin think about it. The magic returns. For the sixth time, Harry Potter and his friends return to the silver screen to take on the sinister Lord Voldemort. He has to do this. Fight back! Coward! Fight back! At the Berlin premiere, the largest German-speaking Harry Potter fan club helped set the mood. Its members grew up alongside the young wizard. Okay. I can't stop thinking about her, Harry. Honestly, you know, I reckon she was starting to annoy you. She can never annoy me. I think I love her. Love. A topic that zeroes in on the film's now more mature know. fan base. Bloody thrilled to be shot. Of I think audiences will love this one because I think everyone can relate to one or other of the experiences that the characters have in the film. Um, they'll know what it feels like to see someone that you really like and you really care about um, not feel the same way about you or to be with someone else and the kind of the heartbreak. Aside from romance, the film also offers plenty of action, of course. And movie theaters across Germany are braced for an onslaught of fans. We're definitely aiming for at least seven million visitors. All the Harry Potter films were box office hits so far. I remember the first one in 2001. We had 12.5 million people go to see it in Germany. Eight years later, Harry Potter mania is still going strong. In some theaters, loyal fans were gearing up for an all-night marathon featuring all six Harry Potter films in succession, lasting some 20 hours. Here in Berlin, the first film goers emerged after two and a half hours, giving Harry Potter and the Half-Blood Prince the thumbs up. It was exciting. It was great, really great. It was like I expected. Quite dark, but with some nice and quite funny scenes too, and suspense. I thought it was good. I think everybody really liked it. There were lots of great scenes, suspense, some parts that were very sad, then funny. It had everything. I'm a bit sad. We have to wait for another year or two for the next film. Sad but true. The final part of the saga is not expected to hit the big screen until late 2010, at the earliest. Well, there's no more waiting around for one of the most original possibilities for a self-portrait, and that's thanks to one of the largest cameras in the world. The Imago one-to-one -one is a seven by four by three meter large chamber that works very much like a giant passport photo booth. It was invented back in the early 1970s by German physicist Werner Krauss, and now, thanks to his daughter, Susanne Krauss, it's back up and running in Berlin. The Imago one-to-one -one was almost forgotten. It went unnoticed for three decades in the cellar of a museum. But then, by chance, Susanna Kraus found an old Imago photo at home and remembered her father's unusual invention. I 
I unrolled a picture and thought, I don't believe it, it's incredible. This photograph is fantastic. And I wondered, where's the camera? I'm not a trained photographer. I have a completely different profession. I approached it all very naively and said, the camera, what do you know, it's still there. I'll get it going again. The biggest surprise at a photo session with the Imago is that you have to go inside the camera to take a picture. Everything else is different too. The lens is an old stovepipe. The lens cover is a closet door. An inverted mirror provides a final critical view. Then the camera is activated by automatic shutter release. Everyone can be their own photographer. Here are the optics. The light from the place where the person taking the picture is standing is projected into here. And from here, it goes straight onto the photo paper. And here is the place where you stand to take your picture. The German physicist Werner Krauss and the goldsmith Erhard Hössler invented the Imago 1 to 1 in 1972. Since she brought the camera back into use two years ago, Susanna Krauss has produced hundreds of Imago portraits. It costs 270 euros to take one. We make only one-of-a-kind pictures. There's no processing or retouching before or afterwards. It's just this one moment. So you really have to show what you want to show, and then it's there. You can't change it, and so every picture is one-of-a-kind. Susanna Krauss is currently exhibiting a selection from her portrait collection in Hamburg. Each black and white photo is a life-size portrait. The photos have their own special magic. You face the mirror and look into your own eyes while you release the shutter yourself. And you don't otherwise have that opportunity. It's a very intimate glimpse. Many people look at the pictures and say, no one looks at a photographer that way. In the age of digital photography, reviving this old technology was a risk. One that cost about 100,000 euros. But Susanna Krauss says the investment was worthwhile. It makes me so happy because it proves I was right when I thought, this has to be possible today too. It's beautiful, even today. And you can see people's fascination when they come and see the pictures. It proves that it was right to bring the whole thing back to life. The most fascinating question is always the same for each picture, of course. What does the result look like? The Imago photo is ready just 10 minutes after it was taken. And this one is once again a real success. Well, here in Germany, summer holidays are finally here and every year at this time does come the question, which song will be dominating the soundtrack of the summer? Well, the answer can be heard on almost every radio station, courtesy of Icelandic Italian pop singer Emiliana Turini. At 32, she's already had a very impressive career and now her jungle drum has beaten its way to the top of the charts. Emiliana Torini is in Berlin to promote her summer hit Jungle Drum. Thank you very much. I had caught the word Jungle Drum from a Frank Sinatra song, it just stuck in my head. And um, at the time, I was com madly in love. And I just thought that, that word resonated with me. And I just felt like my, my body was like a jungle drum. It was all like, it was just kind of wild and fun. The story behind Jungle Drum's success is equally wild. The song was featured in the final episode of Heidi Klum's casting show, Germany's Next Top Model, and made it into the German top 10 overnight. 
Der Song muss halt das Gefühl der Menschen A good summer hit needs to reflect the listener's summertime feelings. It's usually light and has a kind of positive energy. The lyrics don't have to be Edgar Allan Poe either. It simply has to make you feel good and spread good vibes. Emiliana Torini is equally at home in the world of classical music. When she was a child, she dreamed of singing arias. She went to opera school when she was 15 and had a number of small performances. For her father's 50th birthday, she recorded a CD of blues and jazz songs. The CD was a hit in Iceland, thanks partly to her tenacity. There was a huge record store in Iceland called Skivan, and I knew they wouldn't sell my record because we were putting it out ourselves, so I got a job there. So I was always just like, mm. they always put my record like way in the back and I would be like, and of course I was fired. Emiliana Torini is not easily discouraged. In 1999, she released Love in the Time of Science, her first CD, consisting exclusively of her own compositions. Emiliana Torini's international breakthrough came in 2002. She sang Gollum's song, which ran under the closing credits of the second Lord of the Rings film. Torini is also a successful producer. In 2003, she wrote and produced Kylie Minogue's disco hit Slow, for which she received a Grammy nomination. It was brilliant, it was a lot of fun. We wrote it in about half an hour. Got really excited about it, went to the pub, and we're planning how we could use this song, because we were certain she would never use it. And then we got the call, we recorded it with her, thinking we were doing a demo, and that ended up uh, being the track, so we ended up producing it as well. Meanwhile, the 32-year-old has finished recording her sixth studio album, Me and Armini. The CD features 12 songs that span her wide musical range. Jungle Drum has turned into this year's big summer hit. Clearly not a one-hit wonder. Her fans can rest assured that Emiliana Torini's voice will be heard well beyond this summer. Well, from the jungle to the forests and streams of Bavaria, where Jan Haft plies a much quieter trade, one of Germany's most successful nature filmmakers. His films have won countless prizes, and he's considered by many in the genre to be one of the best in the world. His talent is to lead the eye to a side of nature we might never see, and to give often seemingly stationary protagonists, like, for instance, a wheat field, a leading role. Jan Haft's film about the Isen Valley in his homeland, Upper Bavaria, has won 20 international prizes. His latest film is about the hidden life in a cornfield. Haft has made three dozen films for television stations around the world since 1996. It's a love, a devotion, an obsession with nature. I've had it since I was a child. Nothing is as beautiful as capturing all the best moments in the best light and then in the cutting room to weave them into a story for other people. Jan Haft grew up in the country. He studied biology and then began making films. He and his family live on a farm near Munich. It's also his studio and the headquarters of Nautilus Film, his production company. The company has seven employees. Jan's wife, Melanie, supervises production. The company produces two or three films a year, all at the same time. 
Shooting often takes months. These things can't be planned if you want to film wild animals as we do. Your only option is to accept long shooting times so you can get the shots you want onto the film. Nautilus film took 200 days to shoot a journey to Germany's oldest trees. 80 hours of footage were taken for the 90-minute film. Jan uses technology normally used for feature films. Cranes and special lenses, or even a balloon. Sometimes nature is simulated in the studio, for example, to film insects. We try to get the most beautiful footage possible of everyday situations so it's worth watching and gives the viewer pleasure. Two scientists are employed full time to ensure that everything is accurate. That's an exception in the nature film industry. We sometimes have no choice but to reconstruct things on a set. We couldn't film them in nature. Here we have to be careful that we aren't putting stories together that couldn't happen in nature itself. The Haft family's love of nature goes beyond making movies. A horse and a donkey live on their farm, and they too have been the stars of a film. It's a long story about the wild animal that once ruled the vast spaces of the desert, then became the exploited servant of humans, and finally rose to become our beloved Long Ears. The world is so huge, and there's so many places we haven't been to. But you can discover so much with the camera in your own backyard. And viewers, too, like to see the unfamiliar in the midst of the familiar. Like the duel between two stag beetles, Jan Haft turns it into a battle of the titans. Well, a little brother to film, it was in the 1960s and 70s that video art came into its own. And by the time it became an accepted art form, there was a lot of early material hunkering around in basements, getting damp and moldy, which spawned eventually the professional field of video art restoration at the Center for Art and Media Technology in Karlsruhe. And they are now showing a selection of recently restored works. An exhibition charting 40 years of video art. One of the key works shows Josef Beuys in the boxing ring at the 1972 Documenta, which is the most important exhibition of contemporary art. The tape had been missing for almost four decades. Now its restored version is going on display for the first time. Christoph Blaser is curator of the show. In the 1980s, he began collecting unique pieces of German media art. Initially, video was a medium for documenting performances, what's known as a documentary video. Then, of course, it became a new medium for portraying human subjects, and we can also see that here to a certain extent. Filming oneself while filming, viewing the self from a new standpoint. Video made it possible. And the video pioneers were not afraid to experiment. With the magic mirror, a homemade gadget, video artist Herbert Schumacher produced several of these closed-circuit videos in 1970. In a laboratory where old videotapes are cleaned and archived, Blaza checks the condition of video material. He assesses how much cleaning is necessary and which format is correct. We only really know what we've got when we've A, cleaned the tape, B, worked out which machine to play it on, and C, actually digitized it so that we can view it. That's the complexity of the process as far as the tape itself is concerned. Around a thousand tapes have already passed through his hands. Often neglected for decades, they await processing in the archive. They're run on a specially developed cleaning machine until every speck of dirt and dust has been removed. It doesn't always work out. Ganz 
really tough cases that we don't manage to clean properly have to undergo what's called a thermal process. This involves heating the tapes to a certain temperature for a certain length of time, which hardens the dirt and the tape is ready to roll again. The laboratory tries to retain the original character of the work in the reconditioning process. Contrasts or editing techniques remain unchanged. It's also important to be able to play them on contemporary television sets. The remastered works are often remarkable documents of contemporary art. In 1978, for example, the internationally renowned German artist H.A. Schult produced a precursor to a television format widely used today. He had cameras film the daily life of a family as the neighbors look on. It's an early predecessor of Big Brother, almost 20 years before, which shows people outside on the street watching people inside a house, checking out what they were doing all day. These examples of German video art can be viewed for the next two months in the city of Karlsruhe. And now they've been restored, they'll be available to the public for a long time to come. And as always, you can catch some of those reports again, should you wish to do so, so on YouTube. Just go to youtube.com slash Deutsche Welle English. And that's all we have for this time around. So until we meet again, thanks for watching and tschüss.